Citizens' Assembly is a group of people who are brought together to discuss an issues or set of issues and to reach a conclusion about what they think should happen. They can discuss a really broad range of issues. Um, some of the issues we've seen discussed recently include uh, decisions about what to do with the funding of social care, what to do about climate change or the climate crisis at varying levels, but particularly at the local level. We've also seen citizens' assemblies convened to discuss uh, local issues, different kinds of local issues, um, and they've been done in lots of different ways. In the UK, we've seen a lot of different citizens' assemblies over the last few years covering a range of topics. So for example, in 2017, we saw the citizens' assembly on Brexit. We've also seen recently in 2019, um, a citizens' assembly taking place in Wales, which was considering how the people in Wales could shape their own future. Um, and across the UK, we've seen other things, uh, particularly around climate change happening on the, on the local level, but the UK Parliament, six select committees are about to explore that issue through citizens' assemblies too. Um, we've also seen some stuff around a national food strategy. Scotland has one upcoming on the constitutional future of Scotland. Um, and we've seen some as well at the local level around issues like traffic congestion, public transport, air quality and other issues too. Yeah, I think that uh, citizens' assemblies are incredibly useful because what they do essentially is they bring together um, a cross-section of the local population. People are normally selected to participate um, through a process called sortition, which means that the people that take part um, are usually broadly reflective of the local population. You break down those demographics as is appropriate for the process. Um, so they're brought together to discuss an important issue. But during that process, people have an opportunity to receive information, to receive evidence and to learn about a particular topic. They have the opportunity to discuss the topic with people perhaps they've not had uh, much opportunity to discuss the topic with before. And of course, um, some of the strengths of this is that you're bringing people together from different backgrounds, uh, different perspectives that may have different experience and lived experience of some of the issues that you're talking about too. So a range of different perspectives are brought into the conversation conversation. Um, so that range of perspectives, that evidence, that opportunity to learn and to discuss and then to deliberate and to work together to come to an agreement on uh, what proposals you could make um, around a particular issue uh, or an agreement or whatever it is that is intended to be the outcome of that process um, could be a really interesting process and come up with often different ideas or recommendations to what policymakers themselves may have uh, concluded if they were sitting alone in a room and perhaps um, not giving the space for the public uh, process in this way. They don't have to happen just because uh, an issue is proving tricky but we certainly have seen that be the case in some examples and I think uh, what happened in the Republic of Ireland is probably a really good example mm. um, of some tricky issues that have been discussed for a long time um, and that parliamentarians haven't really been able to make much progress on in some ways um, and the Citizens Assembly gave uh, an opportunity for people to discuss issues that were pretty pretty tricky. I mean, they're uh, for some people considered moral issues. Mm. Um, so we were talking about things like abortion, same-sex marriage um, and others. Sortition is essentially uh, the use of random selection to select people that will participate in the assembly process. Um, normally you would expect the people selected to be a representative and random sample of people um, who are selected along different stratification criteria and stratification criteria examples could be for example age, uh, gender, the region or area in which you live so for ex example at the local level um, you see some local processes considering wards in which people live in as part of that criteria, ethnicity, um, whether or not people are in employment and things like that. There are lots of different ways that the selection process and being invited to an assembly could work, but I'll give you uh, an idea of how it could work in practice. So you can imagine, for example, that you're sitting at home and the post arrives, and in the post there's a letter that asks if you'd be interested in taking part in this process, and that process is a citizen's assembly. You write back, you respond um, to a form in that letter, 
and you fill in some information that you may be requested of at that stage, such as potentially your age and some other details. That will then go back to the organisers of the process or the organisers of the selection process and they would group some of the entries depending on some of the data that you've provided at that stage. And then some forms would be randomly selected from different groups to broadly reflect the population along those stratification lines that we referred to earlier, so age, gender, where you live, for example. Then you could expect, perhaps, if you were selected, receive a second letter saying that you have been selected and telling you where and when you might need to go. You may also be offered a small uh, reimbursement for the time that you give to this process and you should receive some information about that in advance, as well as it may contain information about um, childcare facilities that will be available or if you need transport, how that could be arranged. You'll have the information you need about where you need to be, when you need to be there, how you'll be supported to participate. But that's just one example. Um, we have seen in other places that it's not just a letter that's sent out, but teams of people go around and actively knock on doors um, or they might have uh, a phone bank, for example, to call people up and engage some interest in the process early on. So there are a few different things that you could do um, to find uh, different and willing participants as part of the process and enter them into that random selection process. You can imagine that you would arrive for the first of a series of weekends in a citizens' assembly process and you'll be greeted um, and people would explain how everything was going to work both during that weekend, but also what you'll be covering over successive weekends, so throughout this process. You'll be introduced to some other assembly members and importantly also to the people that will be facilitating the process. And you'll have a chance to sit in groups and to get to know people. So there's generally an icebreaker um, and a chance to get to know people. You'll hear evidence from a range of different people about the particular topic and issues that you're discussing. Uh, they may be invited experts, um, they may also be people that you have been invited after you've said actually I'd like to know a little bit more information about this particular thing throughout the process. You'll get to discuss the evidence and the inf you hear in the information that you receive and will have plenty of time to think and reflect on that information that you're hearing in between as well. You should expect to have a group of independent and expert facilitators that will help you to explore the evidence and to have discussions as a group. Their role is primarily uh, to ensure that you have a good and comfortable space to discuss some of the issues that you'll be discussing, to ensure that people have the opportunity and fair opportunity to participate in those discussions, and also making sure that they're kind of flagging where there are any other questions or issues or concerns throughout the process. So their role is really there to facilitate the conversation and to support you in your discussions. Over a period of time, as you discuss, as you deliberate, as you share your perspective, as you hear and you learn from others, and perhaps think about what your position is on the topic, you'll over time get to a point where you work with the group and the rest of the assembly to agree on perhaps a set of recommendations around the topic. Um, and those recommendations that you recommend um, are then what we would call kind of the output of the process and the thing that is then sent to government or whoever else has uh, brought this process together to say this is what the Citizens' Assembly thinks should happen. It's really important to say, um, be informed about decisions afterwards that are made from the recommendations that you've made. Crucially, you have to think quite carefully about the question that you're asking, um, ensuring that it's not, it's not leading, it's not taking sides. Um, and it's a question that people could generally have a, have a good, robust uh, deliberation around. Um, and to do that, you need to ensure that they have the information they need and, and some of the evidence they need to have that discussion. And that information, that evidence, needs to represent a range of views. Um, so there's some ideas there about having a fair balance of some of the different information that people are receiving. And it's often helpful with those two first things in mind to have some kind of advisory panel um, that oversees or guides the assembly process and ask some of those uh, critical and challenging questions as things are designed to ensure that it's being designed in a way that is open and fair and tr as transparent as possible. And publishing what the assembly does actually, so that transparency point, making sure that people are able to follow the process that is happening, both those in the room, they know where their information has come from for example, but also those externally because you want a, a process like this to be seen as, as fair in the eyes of the people that are also observing it, to offer the opportunity for people to come and watch the process uh, play out because of course then you have that 
external eye coming in and, and people can, can see how it's been conducted. I think something that's really, really crucial um, to the good running of assembly as well is facilitators who are trained to be balanced and fair um, and enabled to create a space where people can have good and genuine uh, dialogue and deliberation too. That people have an opportunity to contribute, that people are in a space where they can listen to other contributions and there isn't kind of domination of one particular, uh, one particular voice, for example. The recommendations, the decisions that came out are only made by the members of that particular assembly, those people that have gone through and stuck with that process. Setting the parameters and giving all participants and the organisers and designers who are often uh, independent facilitators of these processes a good idea of what the expected outcome of this process would be, how anything that comes out of this assembly will be used and where it will be going to and how feedback about that progress is going to happen. Um, you can sometimes get a guarantee that things will be implemented, but often what you will see is a recommendation report. And a recommendation report is just that. It's basically a, a set of ideas about how people think something could or should be done or addressed. And you'll often find with government that then needs to go to a committee or somewhere else for action. So. It's often not the case that recommendations lead to immediate action, but they enter a process. What we've certainly heard from decision makers before is that they find these processes incredibly helpful in thinking about the actions that could be taken and that often the recommendations are different to what they may have come up with independently on their own if they haven't, hadn't provided a space for, for the public to be involved.